What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to learn about the delegate pattern for communication between views and other objects. So here's the app we're going to put together. We've got this button inside of this uh, self-enclosed view and we tap on it. We'll be able to delegate from that view back to the controller and show this alert. So this is something some of you have asked for and it's a pretty critical thing to know for iOS development in general. So we'll go through it today. If that all sounds good, make sure you start by smashing the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel and into iOS or if you've been watching along the other videos and would like to, you know, stick around for the party and grow this channel together. So if that all sounds good, let's get into the video. All right, we're going to go ahead and open up Xcode and create a new project here. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS and let's go ahead and give this project a name of view delegates. You want to make sure your language, of course, is set to Swift, lifecycle is UI kit and interface is storyboard. Go ahead and continue. Save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop and let's jump right in. So I'm going to close this right panel to get started. And we're also going to expand our Xcode window here and we'll jump into our view controller. I'm also going to pick a simulator. We'll stick with the 12 Pro Max maybe. Let's go ahead and give that a run just to see our app build and show up on the simulator here. And let's talk about delegates. So delegates are highly common in the general ecosystem and the language. So we're going to do a real world example where maybe we have a screen where we can show the user a view to enable uh, push notifications and we'll talk about using a delegate to communicate between the view uh, and the controller here so uh, sticking with that example we're not going to put any sub views uh, except for the one main one in the controller so I'm going to create a new view here and this is going to be called notification setting view it's going to inherit from ui view and then up here on the controller we're just going to have a single instance of this view so we can go ahead and call this notifications view go ahead and instantiate it just like that now in this view what we wanted to show is two things we want to have a nice bell icon at the top maybe some text in the middle saying hey enable notifications and then a button and when we tap on that button we want the view to communicate that back to the controller so let's go ahead and build out those three pieces so First thing we want is a uh, image view. So I'm going to say this is an image view of type image view, but we want to try to spell that correctly because it's slightly important. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to create it with this block style here, otherwise known as a anonymous closure for those of you who are interested. And let's go ahead and set a image here. We're just going to use a SF symbol, which is a system icon. Uh, of kind bell just like that also go ahead and set a tint color of system blue on it so there is our image view let's go ahead and override the initializer with a frame we're going to say super init pass in that frame add the image view we also need to bring in the required initializer and lay out the sub views of this view if you're not familiar with views in general just uh, bear with us here but we want to focus on delegates today so here is the image view now we also want a label so i'm going to go ahead and say this is a label of kind ui label here and basically we will need to go ahead and fill out this block just like we did up above and let's go ahead and return this we'll go ahead and set some text in here we'll go ahead and say uh, to stay up to stay up to date enable push notifications just like that and we'll go ahead and also uh, align this to be centered and then finally the button which is the most important part in today's example we're going to create let's go ahead and do that with the same format so ui button go ahead and create that block here and here we'll go ahead and create a button just like we did up above for the uh, image view and uh, label we'll go ahead and set a title on it of enable notifications for normal 
I'm also going to go ahead and give it a nice background color of system green. And we'll also give it a nice title color of perhaps white. So now that we've got our other two subviews here, we can go about adding them as a uh, subviews to this larger containing view. So we've got the label and we've got the button. And let's see, now we wanna lay these out to make sure we can start seeing this on our UI. So how are we gonna lay them out? Well, it'll be pretty simple. So I'm gonna say the image size, we're just gonna use frame-based layout is going to be bounds uh, dot size dot width divided by two. So now what we can go ahead and do is say the image views frame is going to be a CG rect. Y will be 10, maybe 30. This will be image size, image size, and we want this to be horizontally centered. So we're just gonna center it by dividing. So we'll say uh, that this is going to be the uh, bounds.size.width. And what we want to do is, nope, not button, we want bounds.size.width. We wanna subtract that image size and divide it by two. And before we go any further, let's make sure we can start seeing this. So uh, let's go ahead and add this as a sub view in our controller, override view did layout sub views. All right, and then we're gonna give this a frame of perhaps CG rect. We'll say 10 from the left, the top will respect the safe area insets top. The width will be view.frame.size.width subtracting 20. And the height will be the uh, height subtracting the view safe area insets top as well as the view safe area insets bottom and let's go ahead and give this a run and let's see if we can see that bell at least showing up so cool there is our bell we need to lay out the label and the button as well and then we'll talk about handling that button via a delegate so we've got this uh image view here let's go ahead and do the label we'll say that this is the x will be 10. The y, I'm just gonna go ahead and say this is uh, the same y as up here. So we'll say 30 plus image size plus perhaps 20. Width will be view.frame.size.width subtracting 20. So view.frame subtracting 20. And we'll just hard code the height here for 100. And then we wanna do the similar thing for the button. So what I'll do is simply copy and paste it. And we'll just tweak these numbers. So the X will go ahead and say is 40. The Y will need to go ahead and add a little bit more uh, spacing to it. So we can actually combine this 30 and 20 to make it a 50. And maybe we can increment that by 110 to make it 160. Width will be the width minus 80. And this should actually be the width of the entire view, not just uh, the image. So we'll go ahead and do that and that. And the height here in this case will be 50. So go ahead and give this a run. Let's make sure our label and images are showing up. Uh, rather button, I should say. So cool, they're definitely showing up. And herein lies the question that delegates will help us answer. So when we tap on this button, we want to maybe show an alert view. But this button is private inside of this class for this view. So how do we actually let our controller know that a button was tapped? So there's a variety of ways you could handle it. Closures is one way, but a common way is delegates. It's a really common way to handle notifying uh, another object of some interaction. So we're going to create a protocol up here. But before we do that, we haven't actually even hooked up our button to a a particular function so we're going to say add target self and we're going to say the selector is going to be did tap button and the event here will be touch up inside and now we're going to declare this function in here it'll be private as well to this class and here we need to notify controller of tap so let's go and make the delegate so we'll see if this go away that error a delegate, we need to first create a protocol which will handle the signature of the delegate. So a common naming convention is the name of the view suffixed by delegate, and it needs to extend any object. We'll need to hold the delegate instance in a weak memory capacity so we don't have a memory leak. And we can define a function in here. So we can go ahead and say did tap uh, enable button. 
Now it's a protocol, so no function body here. Now we'll need to hold an instance of some object that conforms to that protocol here. So we're gonna say weak var, var because it's mutable, weak because it's a delegate, and its type will be the new protocol type optional, because by default it'll be nil and we won't have a delegate. And now what we can do here in this function is we can say delegate, and we can go ahead and call that function did tap enable button. So basically we're saying whoever my delegate is at this point in time, and it might not even be anybody, hence the question mark here, optionality, go ahead and let them know that uh, this event has fired. So how do we get our view controller to actually listen for that event? So what we need to do is pretty simple. We need to first uh, conform to that protocol. So I'm just gonna do it up here. So notification setting view delegate. And now it's gonna give us an error because this protocol has a single function. So we're gonna to have to hit that and hit fix. And you'll see that it'll bring in that function. For those of you who have ever used like something like a table view, you might be familiar with using something very similar like a table view delegate. It's really the exact same uh, premise and approach. And in our case, like I said, we wanna show an alert. So in here, I'm gonna say create an alert uh, controller. And we do need to do one more thing before uh, we get this working after adding this. So I'll go ahead and say enable notifications. Uh, some longer message here to tell user to do stuff. And of course, you can use this approach to show an alert or you know push another controller or really do anything. So now that we have that there, we need to make sure we don't forget to assign that delegate property to self. This is very similar to table view if you haven't, uh, you know, if you've done table views before. So now that delegate is self, down here when the button is tapped, the delegate will be that controller and we'll call this function on it. So let me wrap up this uh, alert here and then we'll run this and give it a end-to-end -end test. So we created our alert here. We're gonna go ahead and make sure we present our alert. All right, and then we also wanna make sure we add a action here. So we'll go ahead and say add an alert action and we'll go ahead and say this is gonna have a title and we'll just go ahead and call it dismiss. This will be cancel and the handler will be nil. So go ahead and give this a run. And if you take a look, when you tap on this, we now see our alert. And it's pretty critical to get this delegate pattern down because it helps us enforce the architecture pattern of something like MVC or MVVM, right? Because views really should not be showing alerts or, you know, doing things on behalf of user interaction. The view should only be delegating that call back to, you know, an object like a controller or router, depending on the architecture pattern you're using. Um, and that word right there, delegating, that's kind of where this this delegate terminology comes from and why Apple uses it. It's meant to delegate user interactions. Now, there's a similar naming convention for data sources you might uh, already know. We're not gonna cover that here today. If you're interested, let me know in the comments down below and I can make a dedicated video on that. If you haven't liked the video already, don't forget to do so and subscribe to the channel for more iOS and Swift related content. Thanks again for watching. That's all I had for y'all today. I will catch you guys in the next one.